I can imagine. I can imagine. You know, educate me because I never had the opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. You you went in to the army and basically you're like, okay, I get it. The Navy SEALs, I'm not eligible for. What do you have over here that's the equivalent? Mm -hmm. Can you walk into the army and, and just become a ranger or is it uh, a process? You got to be in the army for two years before you can mm -hmm. go to ranger school. Like what, what does that even look like? Basically? Yeah. I walked in and asked for, you know, the closest thing to a Navy SEAL, but you can't join as a ranger. You have to do, a, you know, basic training of infantry. Uh, that was 14 weeks. Then you have to go to airborne school and then you have to go through a ranger selection process. Um, but having in my mind as a kid, wanting to be a Navy SEAL and training on my own to be a Navy SEAL physically and all the push-ups and all the sit-ups, I was like, well, that's the hardest thing in the military. I'm definitely going to make ranger selection. Um, not knowing it was like a 60% failure rate, 70% failure rate. Uh, that didn't bother me or whatnot. I didn't know too much about it. So I figured it couldn't be that hard. So in my mind, it was pretty much a guarantee I was going to be a ranger. But for anyone else that goes in, there's a process you have to go through. And even if you make it through that entire process, like while you're a ranger, you can get kicked out at any point in time. Um, staying a ranger is like 10 times harder than actually becoming one to stay in. It's, what do you mean? It's a, we, they have these, uh, we're like considered some of the most by the book soldiers in the military the, to the standard uh there's these thing called ranger standards and if you don't live by those standards or that creed 24 7 on and off work you can be kicked out of ranger battalion uh for the slightest thing you know being a second too late on the run not have uh one push-up too short at any point in your career no matter how good you are in combat and i've watched it happen to multiple guys um excellent excellent war fighters but they couldn't hack it and the ad on the admin side um they were a second too late on a run um simple things simple things like that could get you kicked out the simplest thing could get you kicked out for just not living up to a standard not being able to disassemble all the machine guns um under any condition under darkness uh, knowing how to work this piece of equipment. Anything could get you kicked out. It, it's extremely hard to be, to stay in Ranger Battalion. So okay. guys who make okay. a career out of it, it's a, it's, it's, it was always mind boggling to me to see a guy make it 10 plus years in Ranger Battalion without having not one hiccup. You know, it's, they're pretty good at that. Okay, so I have several questions here. Um, mm -hmm. Number one, is, is that normal? across all of the special ops or so whether you are green beret a navy seal is is it the same where is it's harder to to stay um a navy seal or a green beret more harder to stay a navy seal or a green beret than it is to become one and you mentioned that there is a 70% failure rate to even become a army ranger mm -hmm. what is it about that process that makes so many people fail. Yeah, yeah. So let's start uh, with that question, if you don't mind. Okay, the, what makes it such a hard process? Mm -hmm. The physical portion of it, um, the mental portion of it. So imagine taking a, a few months out of your life, let's say, um, let's just say one month, one month out of your life, and you're gonna take all that time you're not going to be able to see family. You're not going to have any personal time. You're going to average, you know, a few hours of sleep a night. But from sun up to sundown, you're putting yourself through the most uncomfortable physical conditioning conditions that you can, you know, imagine. Um, going all the way to bodily failure to where you pass out and still waking back up and continuing on no matter what. Um, Day in and day out. It, it's a very brutal, brutal process as far as you wear your body down, you you abuse your body in you know, ways you couldn't imagine. It, it's, a, it's a very painful process, but being able to push through that mentally 
it's the hardest process. You know, I made it through on fractured tibia and fibia and still having to walk 12 miles with a 60 pound rucksack on your back. Um, it physically hurt, but getting through it mentally is the hard part. And I think that's why a lot of guys quit. Um, we had a little bit, you know, more higher of a dropout rate than 70%. We, we started off with 95, 90 plus guys, um, around 90 plus guys. And we graduated seven, um, six from those, uh, my original class. So whatever that percentage came out to, that's, that was for that class. And we were labeled like the class that never existed or something like that. Um, one of the smallest classes in, in, in range of battalion uh, graduation wise, but um, I watched a lot of guys break down mentally first, like they could physically hack it, but wanting to continue that physical punishment is what a lot of guys I think fail um, where they, where a lot of guys fail, just not able to see through it to the end. Um, they look in that moment and be like, you know, this really sucks right now. I'm in extreme pain. I'm uncomfortable. I'm cold. Uh, being able to push through that, it's pretty tough. Like I wanted to quit every single day, but I just too dumb to quit, you know? Okay. Um, and again, is, is this something that goes across the board with special ops staying in mm -hmm. is everybody held to these high standards, these, these high regiments. If you come in a second too slow on the run, if you don't know how to disassemble or assemble your weapon, you can be kicked out. Is, is that normal? Is that something specific to army rangers? Oh, I believe it's normal around all special operation units. Um, yeah, I would have to say, because you're, you're dealing with so much, you're dealing with a small group of guys that are tasked to carry out near impossible missions. And you have to hold each guy accountable to the, to the utmost like extreme. Um, if it, we're only, we're only as fast as the slowest guy. So mm -hmm. if it takes from, uh, to get from point A to point B, if the team can make it in the allotted time given to complete that mission. But unfortunately, we have a guy who's a second too slow, a second too late. We want to keep him around because he's a good guy, but he is slowing us down. That's detrimental to our whole mission success. And then we stop getting these high detail, high profile missions uh, to carry out overseas. Uh, we hold each other to like a, a almost an impossible standard of perfection. And a lot of guys crack that way too. Just your, your entire career is based on being as perfect as you possibly can. Uh, when you're not perfect or viewed as perfect in your peers' eyes, like that, that, that itself tears a guy down. And then he just starts falling all across the board and it essentially like forces himself out. Um, just being able to fit in, like it, it's, a, it's a very tight knit group of, of guys to, to work with. And I think that's the, you're dealing with like the cream of the crop. It, it's not like training where guys are allowed to quit. When you're in, when you're actually in the unit, there is no quitting. And if you are that quitter, you just, yeah, you get weeded out instantly. You don't, you don't last long. You don't last long, but driving to that perfection, I think is where special operations, those guys, they need to be in that mindset to always strive to be perfect. Um, but if that one guy is holding us back from allowing us to be a perfect unit, a perfect machine, then you got to go. I'd rather that than to get on a, a mission, the mission of our life, the one we've been waiting for and train our lives for and be a second too late, not be able to accomplish it. We fail it, you know, uh, because we kept some guy around just because he was a good guy. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.